Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with a full case break of 2019 Topps Finest Baseball. Eight box, pick your team number 11 from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Very big thank you to all of these lovely people here for getting into the action. I know it sold out earlier today, but we had that big dual case break that we finally finished. Uh, Joseph Andreessen with the Rangers and Reds, double last spot mojo. So thanks to him for getting into that. Here is the case right here. Good luck, everybody. Two autographs per box, one per mini box. So we've got two right here, four, six, and eight. Good luck, everybody. Um, Rory was mentioning before we started the break, Shoei Otani hit for the cycle. That Yes, that is definitely hashtag good for the hobby. And I saw a report on MLB.com, I think, that suggested that he was – and I'm going to – Take this pack and move it right to the top because I think the autograph usually isn't that first, that first pack down there. Um, just for extra suspense so the auto doesn't pull too early. I think I saw on MLB.com they were they were saying that he was going to be able to start throwing soon, which I think is quite ahead of schedule. Maybe not maybe not back to pitching, but I think that he can start throwing soon. So. That would also be hashtag good for the hobby. I think, I think that the Angels should turn him into a closer. Because I think he could, he'd be able to hit more on a, right? I mean, he, he could technically hit seven days a week, right? And still close out games three times a week. Angel's bullpen, I don't think, isn't very good. So he can even do the old school. Remember those old school two-inning saves? That I think Goose Gossage, guys like that, were doing? He could be that. He can bring the old two-inning save back. Could be interesting. Well, I guess the auto's going to come out early anyway. Brandon Lau, who's been hitting really well. Scott V with the Rays. There you go, Scott. How many pitcher hitters have there been since the 80s? I think you can count them on one hand. There can't be... Like, who... I feel like that, that there's, a, there's a categorization issue, right? There's a criteria issue. Because some may just say, oh, there were hitters... And here's Tim Anderson, who's 25, for the White Sox. There were pitchers who could hit, but they wouldn't necessarily play positions, right, As outside of pitching. Has there been any? Not too many of them that have been successful, or as successful as Otani. Here's Dakota Hudson to 50, gold. And Keel, maybe, Ricky and Keel, did he play and pitch? I guess the autographs are in the are in a diff on the other pack. Justice Sheffield, still Yankees edition in this set, going to Diane. So there's your two autos there. Next box. I mean, there has always been good hitters that could pitch, but they would never let him. They would never let the person be a regular member of the bullpen or the rotation, right? And there's always been pitchers who could hit, but they're never playing. They're only hitting when they're starting, right? They're, they wouldn't be DHing or something like that. So, um, 
like Madison Bumgarner can hit the ball pretty well, but you're, he's not going to be playing first base anytime soon, right? I think his arm is far too valuable, at least for him anyway. But yeah, and I think the AL does lend itself, definitely lends itself better with the, uh, definitely lends itself better to the two-player thing, you know? But yeah, so in the modern age of baseball, this is uncommon. Although you are starting to see um, some more players coming up the ranks that can do it. Hunter Green, who's with the Reds, I don't think they're going to let him hit. But Hunter Green with the Reds uh, was a both a pitcher and a shortstop. Brendan McKay on the Tampa in the Tampa Bay Rays farm system can play first base and and pitch. Yeah, I think Michael Lorenzen, right? Is that his name? Michael Lorenzen in, in, in Cincinnati often pinch hits. So, But he's a relief pitcher, so I think he can still hit. But yeah, for... Right, Deswarm. Mike Hampton just could, could hit the ball. But they never... But yeah, maybe they use him as a pinch hitter a couple times as well. But I think Otani would be your first sort of... First sort of player that a team has acquired to specifically do both things not stumble into one or the other but specifically wants them to do both things you know Otani we want you to start and the other days we want you to DH like that's their specific plan there's Jake Bowers Rays edition going to Scott you know what I mean so yeah I think Otani's that first player in this modern era but I think there seems to be more and more of that Kind of coming into into play with some of those other characters, but I mean, I want to say, I want to say, even Babe Ruth didn't have a lot of crossover, you know, between pitching and hitting at the same time. Out of 150, Carlos Correa. I think once they realized just how well Babe Ruth can hit the ball, they had just had him stop. He didn't pitch as much, if at all. So I don't think there was too many seasons crossover where he was doing both. A little crossover, but I don't think very much. Mariano Rivera die cut for the Yankees. Still have not seen a Mo auto yet. I know they're very hard to get, but still haven't seen it. Diane with the Yankees. Good luck. Jeter, too. We haven't seen him either. And there is David Fletcher, speaking of the Angels. 62 out of 99. But, I mean, Otani's the kind of the great experiment. You know, can his body hold up? So far, no, it hasn't. <laughs> you know, like, he had, to, he had to get the surgery. So he can't throw for a year, or at least can't pitch competitively for a year. Angels goes to Robert Aguilar. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him once he can pitch again. Will he start again or will he not? I mean, I have to say, though, Otani was electric when he was able to do both. You know, the kid, you know, is striking out a ton of batters one day and then hitting bombs the other day, the next day. It's, it was pretty crazy. I've only seen him at an Angels game. I've only seen him uh, hit. I haven't seen him pitch. All right, next up. But I think he'll be back pitching. I mean, the Angels are planning to have him pitch next year and hit next year. So whether they have him start or whether they have him... Um, you know, maybe bullpen work remains to be seen. But I think they're kind of figuring it out too. What's the usage? Because there's no test cases, right? There's really no other players that do it. So, uh, especially on the major league level, you know, so what do you, you know, so they're still kind of figuring out what's the, what's the, uh, whatchamacallit, what's the, the, lo the load management, you know, of, of, of those players.
but yeah, it seems like pitchers would always be great batters because they know what to look for. I, you know, when I I used to think that too, and I realized it's just it's just different throwing something as opposed to waiting for something to be thrown at you. You know what I mean? That ends up right near Nolan Arenado's head the other night, right? I mean, it's tough. Like. One of, yeah, it is one of the hardest things to do in, in, in sports. You know, but it's like, could a quarterback be a good linebacker just because they know what a quarterback's... I don't know. So, I mean, I don't know if that... I don't know if that translates. Todd Helton. Nice one for the Rockies. David Bruins. Finest origins autograph. Wait, Johnny, you're saying hitting a baseball is the third hardest thing to do in all of sports. What do you think is number one? Quarterback? There's Danny Jansen, rookie auto. So what's the top three hardest things to do in sports? In like the major sports. Hockey, baseball, basketball, football, soccer. Charlie Blackman to 99. All right, next box. I think, I want to say, Gianni, I would say hitting a, a baseball is one of the hardest things, is, is the hardest thing to do in the major sports. If, for the precisely the reason that Rex is talking about, like, like if you calculate like the reaction times and blah, 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 like you're, you're, this is why there's only a 30% success rate. A 30% success rate of hitting the baseball will get you into the Hall of Fame. 30%. If a quarterback only completed 30% of their passes, everyone would be like, what a scrub. What a Nathan Peterman. Sorry, Nathan, if you're watching. You know, that's what they would say. Like, he's crazy. Hitting a baseball. I have a hard enough time going to a batting cage and hitting like a slow pitch softball. Or like a, a little league fastball. Rex saying Joey pulled Todd Helton. Do you remember Todd Zeal? A third baseman Todd Zeal. Mets. Cardinals, I think. He is, he is a Todd, but he never sees out. Is he dead? Is he dead? Todd Zeal is dead. I don't know if Todd. Is Todd Zeal dead? Todd Zeal's not dead. No, Todd Zeal is very much alive. He is 53 years old. Alive and well. What is, what is he doing now? He's doing some film work, apparently. The only reason I have QB ranked one, Gianni says, is because of the sheer volume of hitters versus the volume of, of QBs. Oh, I see. Like, there's only 30, 32 quarterbacks in the National Football League, and there's hundreds and hundreds of hitters. I mean, there's just not many, very many positions of it. I mean, that's true, but only 16 quarterbacks are, are good, right? 10 quarterbacks are elite. <laughs> Eight, five quarterbacks are elite. But I, I guess the physical, I guess I'm thinking more of a physical mechanic side of things. Like the physical mechanic of hitting a baseball, I think is harder than, than throwing a football. You know, but then you can start slicing. The Cardinals is Andrew Herman. Then you can start slicing like, well, now you got to learn plays. Now you got to learn coordinating with your entire, the, the 10 other people on the field and all that sort of stuff. So I get it, yeah. It's a tough argument. It's a fun argument. It's a tough one, though. 
Cody Wise, you're saying... You think tennis is too? Tennis is harder than people... I, pl I played a lot of tennis. Tennis is harder than people think, but I don't... I don't think it's among the most difficult. I mean, if I could play tennis. How hard could it be? There's Dal Lu. Oh, that's according to ESPN, says Cody? Yeah, Gianni's like, I played tennis. I played through high school, so. So I was definitely. And our, our tennis courts were next to the baseball field, so. I saw what they were doing. They saw what I was doing. I think what they were doing is a little bit harder. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, I love I love tennis a lot. There's there's a lot of mental toughness that you have to have to be a tennis player, you know. I mean, it's kind of a one on one sport. You can't talk to your coach. They're in a box sitting way up there, you know. So once you're so there's a lot of things that are just on your shoulders to make adjustments and all that sort of stuff. It's a lot harder than people think, especially at a professional level. Like the the mental strength you have to have is a lot like golf, you know. But even golf, you still have a caddy that can help you out if you need to. You're all by yourself in tennis. So the video said technically hitting a baseball should be impossible because you don't see the ball till it's right on you. I think you... Can. I think that I, I've heard that before too. I feel like that's a little over exaggerated. Like you can still see a baseball coming at you right here, right? You can see it coming off the hand. And where they get it is like where their release point is, whether it's a fastball or when you see their arm turn just slightly for the curveball or snap down for another curve, a slider, curveball, right? And so. When you see that release point, and depending on the count and all that sort of stuff, you would scout enough to know what direction it would kind of come, and then you'd be able to adjust. And you can make a quick enough adjustment. Like tennis serves come at you at 100 miles per hour, and so you can kind of figure it out once it comes out of the hand. But I think like part of it is just natural anticipation of the ball, and you're just kind of reacting to it. Um, I think... I don't think your your eye scientifically. I don't think your eye literally can track that ball right to the right to the bat, because like you blink or whatever, and there's like enough only so many frames your brain can process. So there's like a blank spot in the middle, and then it shows up right at at the plate. You know what I mean? It's 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 weird. I've it's kind of hard to, hard to think about, but it's like, but I think that's the like the science of it. Remember that sports science show? I love that host of the sports science show. A baseball thrown from Noah Syndergaard comes out of his hand as an angle of 48 degrees at a torque of 120 pounds and comes at you at 98 miles per hour. I did not have my own tennis. Uh, I, I, you would have a grunt. Some moments you have a grunt, yeah. You grunt, everyone grunts. You grunt. You hear Rich Hill grunting. You pitchers will grunt all the time, too. You can hear Verlander grunting. Oh, Matt Bonner, you got you play tennis, too? It's tough. Yeah, a lot of levels in tennis. I was like the last squad in doubles. <laughs> so I had, didn't play all that much. But yeah, just to get to that, those top levels are extremely difficult. Corbin Burns, autograph. David Hewton. A lot of debate in the, now that the French Open just wrapped up, a lot of debate in the tennis community about the number of matches that, like, pros have to play, you know, or the number of matches that, like, amateurs have to play just to get up the ranks. And there's a lot of burnout, and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of kids just crisscrossing the world trying to play tournaments, trying to go up the ranks, but for little money and for not a lot of gain and a lot of early injuries because they're playing so much. 
There's Rowdy Telles, 99. I think Federer and Nadal have always said we got to reduce the number of got to reduce the number of tournaments that we play a year or are required to play a year to maintain rankings. 40 out of 150, Ryan Baruki for the Blue Jays. That one will be for uh, Joseph Andreessen for the Blue Jays. But it's crazy. Yeah, tennis is crazy. It's just a huge pyramid that you have to climb from like bottom to, to the top to even get to any kind of pro-am sort of level. Does Nolan Ryan still have the fastest recorded pitch ever? I don't know. I feel like a role Chapman or someone like that kind of beat that. All right, next box. Verlander, I know. Verlander, the, the ageless wonder. Maybe Roy's? A new PED that we can't detect? On scale one to now, how bad does his shoulder hurt in the morning after the game? Probably like nine. Matt Bodden remembers being 16, getting jacked up by 11-year-old tennis prodigies. Yeah, that happens a lot around around Southern California as well. Um, golf, too. I have some friends who are just like, yeah, you know, there'll be like some, some little like 90-year-old like Korean-American girl at the golf show. It's like, yo, I saw this. Nine-year-old Korean kid at the golf course, like a Korean-American kid at the golf course, and and this girl was just dead straight drive, like 250 yards at like nine years old or something like that, and, and here I am slicing my drives left and right, it was like it was insane. Kids are getting, kids are being better at younger ages. It's crazy. Jay saying, I thought they said Nolan Ryan hit 108. Once, but it like it was just it's only a rumor because they didn't use radar guns, right? The the measuring of the of the thing has always been debatable, debated. All right, Roy, seven a.m. in Paris. Hello, and heading home tonight. Well, have a good flight, Aussie Albius. Nice, Jared Nictor. Have a good flight. Um, enjoy some croissants for me in the morning. Got to have a croissant. Maybe watch some, uh, I don't know. Got to catch a World Cup match or something like that. Yeah, Johnny's saying, if I remember correctly, Aroldis Chapman has the fastest recorded pitch at 105.1, which is insane. Starlin Castro to 150. Who has the Braves again? Jared Nictor. Nice, Jared. With the Aussie Albies, by the way. The other Jared now needs a... The other Jared needs something. A Luis Urias, at least, he says. He has the Padres in this one. There's Will Myers. Does that help? Out of 250. And there's another Corbin Burns. Green Wave. 76 out of 99. Another one for David Hewton and the Brew Crew. Right, two boxes to go. We're almost there. Myers out of 250 helps a tiny bit, says Jay. We got four autographs to go. Two in this master box and two in the last box way back there. So 
Keep those fingers crossed. We're not done yet. And a, or a red Tatis Jr. base will also count. So a train whistle Tatis Jr., no ink, will also help. Is that Granky a Hall of Famer? Did we talk about this yesterday? I feel like we did. But I think we kind of glossed over his his stats. But he, he had a no-hitter going through however many innings today. Is he a Hall of Famer? Mariano Rivera die cut, another one for Diane. Rex looked it up. He said Chapman has the fastest pitch at 105.1 in 2018, and Nolan was the record at 100.9. Justice Sheffield to 150. They say Matthewson and Page, along with others, Bob Feller probably, Bob Gibson too. May have thrown faster, but they had no way to record it. You should watch Rex's documentary called Fastball. I think it may still be available on Netflix. There's Eddie Rosario who's been raking this year. 71 out of 99 for the Twins. Damian Stock with the Twinkies. Watch the uh, documentary Fastball. It talks about that. I think we watched the trailer the other night where they had like, where like Bob Feller was trying to throw a pitch. And they would set up like, like two paper things that you can just bust through. And they would have like a motorcycle cop start and speed up. And right when he passed like a line, Bob Feller would throw a pitch. And, he, and the cop would be going at like 60 miles or like 80 miles per hour or something like that. And they'd try to get a photo finish or something like that. Very primitive, but it was pretty funny to see, to see that happen. But I think... It is definitely worth it. So is he a Hall of Famer? 187 wins. Tw almost 2,500 strikeouts. A lifetime 339 war. I mean, maybe if he hits, like, some milestone numbers. There's Carlos Correa to 250. I mean, if he hits, like, maybe... I don't know, 3,000 strikeouts in his career, 200 wins. That could that could do it. Not I'm not saying first ballot, but maybe if he adds like a like a World Series to his resume, maybe another late late career Cy Young or something like that. And nice Miguel Andujar for Diane and the Yankees. Gianni says, based on those sets, not so far, not right now. I think he could be close, could be borderline. Maybe, a, yeah, a World Series maybe? I would say either that or like another, another Cy Young. You know what I mean? Because he had, he's had a couple already, I want to say. No, he's only had one. One Cy Young back in his Royals days. So, and he's finished in the top five a couple times recently. If he knocks out another, another Cy Young, maybe late in his career, maybe get some of the counting stats. 
Alright, he actually has 194 wins right now. So he got seven this season. Seven and two. And if he gets that to maybe 250 wins, 300 is hard these days, but maybe 250 wins. Maybe a World Series. Like a World Series MVP couldn't hurt. Something like that, like a signature performance type thing. Yeah, 339 ER, lifetime ERA is not bad in this day and age. Yeah, he he was closest that one year where he finished second in Cy Young voting when he was with the Dodgers. And he lost it to Jake Arrieta. It was that Jake Arrieta Cy Young year. Granky's war was higher. He had 9.1. Arietta's war was 8.3. Granky had a 166 ERA. Arietta had a 177. Innings were about the same. Hits given up about the same. Arietta had 36 more strikeouts. I don't know what it was. I think maybe it was because it was such a comeback story for Arietta that he got those Cy Young votes. Was that World Series year, Arietta? No, that, that World Series year was the year after. I don't know what it was. It must it must have been like just like a comeback sort of thing. Because he did nothing his first year with, or is the first second half of the season with Chicago. 2018 was kind of a wash. Only made 25 starts. Was kind of pedestrian. Oh, he had 22 wins. That's what it was. I think baseball writers are stupid. I think he had 22 wins and that led the league or something like that. And so I think that's like the, the sort of counting stat mark. They like, Granky only had 19 wins. Granky's winning percentage was better too. And he got robbed. Granky got robbed. That's ridiculous. Man, remember how Matt Kemp got robbed by... by by Ryan Braun, roiding Ryan. I remember. There's gold, Brandon Lau. Nice, thirty-nine out of fifty. Oh, don't don't get me started. You got me started. Don't get me started on the Matt Kemp being robbed. Of an MVP award, I'm 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 certain that it was 2011. He was one home run short of a 40-40 season. I feel like that's it. If he had one more home run, he had 40-40. He would have been voted in. The WAR was pretty similar, though. Actually, to be honest with you, um, Matt Kemp had an eight WAR that season, and Ryan Braun had a 7.7. .7. Um, the bronze batting average was maybe 10 points better. OBP pretty much the same, slugging pretty much the same, OPS pretty much the same. Ryan Braun had a 30-30 season, 33 home runs, 33 stolen bases. Kemp had 39 home runs and 40 stolen bases. Why didn't they just get I feel like if Kemp had the 40-40, he would have done it. He had more hits than Ryan Braun too. What the hell? He played more games than Ryan Braun as well. He played 161 games. Back in the day when Matt Kemp could play 161 quality games. Unbelievable. Rigged. Did Ryan Braun, did they go to the playoffs that year? I have no idea. Anyway. Robbed. I feel like if those silly baseball writers saw 40 40 in, in Kemp's stat line, they would have been like, yep. 40 40 season, got to put them in. You know? Or something else that happens is that uh, sometimes, like, that's how Donaldson won that one year, the MVP. He just raked in September. Just destroyed in September. There's Tuki Toussaint for the Braves. That's our last autograph right here. Jared Nichter with that one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is that. 2019 finest baseball in the books. We're sure are getting traded. To 250, Scherzer for Joseph Andreessen. 
Thanks everyone for getting into it. Thanks for hanging out. That was Pick Your Team number 11 of 2019 Tops Finest Baseball from jazbeescasebreaks.com.